I looked up football coach in a uh, dictionary the other day, and there's a picture of Mel Skillman in it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mel Skillman. I was going to start out with, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, I'd like to say a few words. My wife knows that's not possible, a few words out of me. It's been a great honor to be selected into this group. As I look at all those pictures back there of all people that I know and people who I have followed forever, I'm thinking, my golly, how can I ever fit in with a group like that? But I'd like to thank the people who helped me to get there. Uh, thank you, committee, for giving me the shot. I'd like to thank the athletic directors who had a great influence in my life. Mr. Ron Stelter, rule book Ron, if you ever worked with him, you know what that means. If it's a rule, we will follow it, whether you like it or not. And uh, every now and then we lost an athlete because of that. <laughs> but we followed the rules, and I think that's one of the things I have learned and I really try to enforce with my kids, the people I coach now, I tell them this is our rules and we will follow them. I tell my assistant coaches all the time, don't make an example out of a kid who's going in right after the pom-pom squad. Make an example of that starter who broke the rules and then everybody will understand what we're going for. And I think that's really helped. So Ron, thank you very much, you and Hugh. I'll put up with a lot of stuff that we went through over there, but we had a lot of fun doing it too. And Mr. Mike Thayer, who gave me a shot over at Merrill, uh, they hadn't been very successful, and we happened to get a group of people that uh, wanted to play the game. One of my problems that I find nowadays is when I hear the saying, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, as long as everybody plays and has fun. I have never had fun losing. I tried it a few times. It really sucks, guys, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. Try, try to win. And I was impressed with uh, Chris Sarmiano when he said, uh, we went on the field with only one thing in mind. Is it going to be a tough game or are we going to crush them? We're going to win, but it's going to be one of those two things. And that's the influence I want to give to my players. Most of you, who, most of the people who have been up here have said something about their mom or dad or something. My mom and dad, like all these people up, been up here, never missed a game. But my dad was the only person I ever knew that when I came home from the ball game, doesn't matter how late it was, you will sit down and you will get a, criteria, a few odd things that I observed that you did wrong. One night I scored, in those days, 41 points in basketball. I still sat down and listened to 20 minutes of screw-ups I had done. <laughs> not passing, not doing this, my man scored six points, blah, blah, blah. And he didn't miss one ball game, football, basketball, it didn't matter. My dad never missed any of them. And the things were always the same. My brother and I both went on to become teachers. I taught 37 years, most of it in chemistry. Don't see many football coaches coaching chemistry, guys. I hate to tell you. And my brother taught mathematics. My dad said, you will go to college and you will graduate. And then every year he got me a job at Wordsmith Air Base that was really crappy. That was to influence the importance of get an education and go to college. And I appreciate that. I love my dad. And I miss him every day. When I said we only had a short time, I thought I would introduce a few of my assistant coaches because whether you like it, guys, assistant coaches make you or break you. I've been really fortunate. You saw on the uh, tape uh, Coach Fenton. Uh, Louie and I played against each other, as we said, in high school. And then we uh, went to college together, and we were on the first wrestling team, Mr. Ruz, that Central Michigan ever had. We got beat faster than any NCAA team had ever been beaten. <laughs> Usually you have one wrestling, one warm up. We had four or five warming up and hell, they never got warm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bragging, but I was the only guy to make it into the second period. <laughs> That's because the guy had so many choices, he didn't know which one to use. <laughs> they, there were people still paying coming in as the last match was over. That's, that's, 
But it was a great experience. We had a wrestling coach that really knew the sport. He had a book. <laughs> wrestler A grabs Wrestler B. Which one of these guys is A, guys? <laughs> and that's who we learned from. But we had fun. And we also uh, played baseball with Mr. Tom Brown. Uh, I was a catcher and he was a shortstop. So those are some other things we remember back in those days. Uh, coach Fenton was fun. Coach Rutledge was a great line coach for me. Uh, Joe Michael Eichek, who played at Bay City uh, St. Stan's back in those days. And he has since passed away. He was a really good friend of ours, and he was a great guy. Uh, coach Petty Place is here. He was always a lot of fun and worked with us. Uh, I had a, a strange quote, a group of people at MacArthur i got to mention quickly. Some of you know Dave Coffey, Mr. Quiet and Reserved Dave. He screams and hollers all the time. I had Bernie Call at the same time. Bernie Call was my freshman coach. He would start the season with 27 or 28 freshmen and end up with 40. He was still recruiting freshman football players the last day of the season. He had people. Dave Coffey was my JV coach. And he was boisterous. And he was excitable. Had they been in the other way around, we would have never had a JV team. Dave would have scared them all off and they'd all been running for cover. But the way it worked out, it worked out really good. They, they knew after being with Bernie for a year, and it was common and peaceful that Dave was looking ahead, but if they lucked out and got up to Joe, Mike, and Louie and I, they'll be okay. So that was always fun. Uh, John Streeter and Chad Claw were some local guys that uh, played for us, and uh, it was always fun working with all these people. I could mention a lot of these guys. And, uh, football has given me a lot of great memories. I've been to a couple of reunions lately of kids who played for me 25, 30, 35 years ago. I always get a kick out of it when they say, Hi, coach, remember me? Well, let's see, you were 40 pounds lighter and you had hair. Let me think what you looked like. <laughs> so it's a little hard to remember all those people. But when they tell me their names, I can remember funny things that happen. You remember all the funny things that go on during the season. And I tell my football players to this day, when I recruit kids, I'm at Breckenridge now, some of you know, I recruit kids all the time and I tell them, you are going to make friends in sports that you can't make anyplace else in life. And these people are going to be your friend forever. You're going to run into them later on. Remember back when? Remember back when? When I talked to Sarmi and Leibinger and those guys at their reunion, remember back when this happened? Remember back? And you remember. And then you throw out a few things to them that you remember, and they go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. Um, so those are, those are great times we've had. It was fun to coach wrestling. Uh, we started the, when I was at Freeland, we had the, a Freeland Invitational, which up until a couple of years ago was the longest running continuous tournament in the state. Uh, that was cool. We started the county wrestling tournament when I was at MacArthur. That was fun. And uh, so wrestling has also been a part. But when you start making the playoffs in football and you play on Thanksgiving, then the next weekend you've got a tournament in wrestling and you haven't even met your team yet. It's kind of hard to coach them, so you have to give up something, so I end up giving up wrestling, but it was fun. So thank you all, and uh, my family, uh, they've been just super duper. My daughter is here, and her husband from Colorado Springs, and my two adopted kids, and my stepsons, and all in there, they've been all been here, and we've had a great time together. And I thank them, my wife, for putting up with all the time, because coaching takes time. Whether you like it or not, coaching takes time. Away from your family and away from everything. And so you do spend a lot of time doing those things. And yet your family has to understand that. Someone says, I just finished 56 years. How can you still be coaching? Well, I don't play golf. I don't hunt. My wife sold our cabin on the lake and moved us back in the woods where we have a bear, which means you don't go outside at night. <laughs> Uh, we raise leader dogs for the blind, and those are fun, but again, you don't go outside at night up north. And uh, those are all family things that you have to sacrifice sometimes to be a football coach or be a coach. But it's something I really love to do. Uh, a number of years ago at MacArthur, uh, one of my times, I had some time, 
And I wrote a benediction to read at the banquet at the end of the season. I'd like to read just the last line of it, because I think it's kind of neat. When the last second ticks off the clock of life, may we be lifted on eagle's wings in victory. Amen. Thank you.